the syllabus refers to a large detail on what telecommunication engineers actually do. When this syllabus was developed in 1990s, the late 1990s, analog mobile phones had just been discontinued. Digital mobile phones were brand new. Um, look at how things change in 20 years. This syllabus was revised in around about 2011 and updated. So let's go through some of the key points. Let's go through some of this. The um, scope of the profession. The scope of a profession of telecommunications engineering is wide ranging. I'm just going to read off the syllabus for a second. Um, you need to look at the nature and scope, health and safety issues, training for the profession, career prospects, relationships with the community, technologies unique to the profession, including legal and ethical implications, engineers and managers, and current applications and innovations. You need to know current information about telecoms. As part of this, you've got to define the responsibilities of an engineer, describe the nature and range of work, examine projects and innovations, as well as look at training and careers prospects for telecommunications engineers. Wide ranging. Let's have a look at a few of the key points. Um, for scope, unique technologies. As I said, a telecommunication, telecommunications engineer um, is transmitting a signal from one point to the other point. Doesn't matter what it is, they're doing exactly the same thing. Could be a phone, an old analogue phone, could be a digital phone. A telecommunication engineer has got to define a, design a system that will put voice onto a carrier wave, transmit the carrier wave, demodulate it, and produce the output signal. Could be a phone, could be internet. Get the information. Modulate it, transmit it, demodulate it, put it out the other end. Data is indeed um, more than the internet. Data communication can happen locally within a um, site. It doesn't necessarily need to have internet available. It could be a wide, um, could be long range Wi-Fi, short range, range Wi-Fi where you've got two computers just talking directly to each other. So, unique technologies, wide ranging. We'll have a look at a few. Innovations, probably a good point. 5G. 5G transmits a lot more than 4G. They talk about gigabit internet. 5G can do it and it's on your mobile phone. How does that happen? Let's have a look at that. The National Broadband Network, how does that happen? The range of work telecommunications engineers do. I think I've pretty well covered it. It's wide ranging across multiple fields. Not only telephone providers, but they are working in industry, getting machines talking to control rooms, designing systems to get machines to talk. The key point in the range of work when the syllabus was written 20 years ago, engineers needed to know analogue and digital. These days, because of the fact that digital tends to transmit a lot clearer and a lot more accurately, a telecommunications engineer has a massive overlap with a software engineer. They need to be able to completely design, understand, interpret digital data digital transmission methods. So the focus is overwhelmingly digital. Responsibilities I've touched on. When we look at health and safety, things such as remote surgery, design a system that will let a surgeon in Sydney operate on an operating theatre in Dubbo remotely. You want to make sure that the system is absolutely perfect and foolproof with redundancy or backup. So if the main internet connection is lost, you have a secondary internet connection. Tele um, teleconsultations. 
um, a lot of consultations now are happening over the telephone, over video, not face to face. And once again, going back 20 years when the syllabus was written, the big issue was there was a link published at the time, which is still uncertain. They're not sure if it happens on the link between mobile phones and radiation and um, possible, possible health effects. You'll need to know a bit about that.